Good afternoon. It's Saturday, August 7th, 2021. In the Orthodox Church, there are 12 major festivals throughout the year. One of them, which is also celebrated in the Western Church, falls on August 6th, the Feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord. In the Revised Lectionary, we celebrate this on the Sunday before Lent except in the Catholic tradition where it occurs on the second Sunday in Lent. It's also the anniversary of the dropping of the atomic bomb at Hiroshima. We ourselves can be transfigured, just as Jesus was transfigured on that mountain. Or we can choose instead to be disfigured, much as the earth was disfigured by the bomb at Hiroshima. I'd like to share with you the passage from Mark's Gospel about the Transfiguration, and then a short meditation by Joseph Donders. This is Mark chapter 9, verses 2 through 10. Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John, and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say, they were so terrified. Then a cloud came casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead might mean. Said meditation by Joseph. Donders. Their conception of themselves limited their awareness and their actions. It even restricted their awareness of what Jesus might be able to do. Peter, James, and John had some hope in him, that's true, but they had no idea what they were really in for. Maybe that's the reason he took them out of this world, out of the world they knew so very well, out of the relationships they were accustomed to, away from the water most of them had practically been living in as fishermen. He took them with them to a top of a mountain. Once up there, he started to change. First his clothing, then he himself, transparent and yet opaque, white and yet full of color, while heavenly beings appeared, Elijah and Moses. They heard him discuss with those two the coming change, the Passover, a transformed, shining world. They did not know what to say. They were taken by surprise. They mumbled something about staying there and about tents for three. Then to top it all, a cloud came down. A shadow fell. A voice was heard. This is my son, the beloved one. Listen to him. Suddenly, everything seemed over. He was standing there again, just like they had seen him so often before, one just like them. Now they knew what he was in for. They understood what the future would be, not only for him, but for themselves too. Had not he always been like them? Had not they always been like him? Had not he told them that anything he would do, they would do even better? He ordered them not to tell anyone what had happened to him or what would happen to them before that new life had risen from the tomb of the old. Though they did not yet fully understand, they looked at their hands and their feet. They looked at one another, and they knew that the power of change would be given to them. They knew that one day they too would shine. They understood that they would be able to do more than they ever expected to do. And so should we, seeing ourselves reflected in the image of his transformed self, Emmanuel, God with us. 
I wish you a happy, pleasant evening.